You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. Hello, and welcome to CCTV News. It's December 2007. I'm Stephanie Smochik with Blaine Vandergreen. Here are the top stories. Our car crash on the 407. Car this crash on the 407 has left human remains and. Oh. Okay. Keep going. Oh, human remains in Bracebridge were identified by the coroner's office this morning. Two city councillors have asked for an audit to be done on each member's spending habits. And now to our top story. We start with some sad news today as the fate of a Toronto woman is left uncertain after a Highway 407 accident this morning. Witnesses say that a chunk of ice smashed through the windshield of a car. When the tow truck arrived, everything seemed fine until a BMW came out of nowhere and clipped the truck, which flipped it over. After the accident, the road was shut down for hours. The injured woman is in hospital right now and is said to be in critical condition. A hunter found the remains of a woman who has been missing for four years in a Bracebridge bush. The woman has been identified as Frania Cardenas, who has not been seen since November 2003. After her disappearance, an investigation led to charges of second-degree murder on Cardenas' husband, Yanga Wanji. Wanji is thought to have fled the country after getting the news of his wife's disappearance. The cause of death is not yet known. Toronto councillors may be left with empty piggy banks very soon as council has asked the city to do random audits to find out how councillors are spending their budget money. Thus far, the decision is be already being supported by councillors Rob Ford and Doug Holliday. For those of you who enjoy street meat, it might not be so easily accessible. Howard Moscow is proposing that vendors take down the shelters around their stands as he claims they take up too much around their stands as he claims... Uh, sorry, as he claims, they take up too much space around their stands on sidewalks. The problem for vendors is, is as they're now experiencing snowfall, uh, snow squalls, Sarah Roberts has the story. Howard Moscow is asking that hot dog vendors in downtown Toronto take down any sheltering from around their stands. Many vendors are up in arms about this because they say this will leave them with no protection from the season. Vendors aren't the only ones affected by the new proposition by Howard Moscow. Trying to move on the outside of the corner, and they're only going to get an umbrella. So that's not, that's not enough. That's crazy. Do you think you'll want to support them more because they are, like, you know? Yeah, because that means they're struggling more, you know? They're in the cold, they deserve more now. Yeah, you know? sure. It's like me standing on a street like this saying, hot dog, I just know that. Minchev is a street meat vendor at Dundas Square. Minchev is open three months a year but works eight hours a day. She has been a vendor for 12 years and got into the business through family when she came here from Bulgaria. Minchev says she thinks vendors can't do very much to fight what Moscow is proposing. Do you think vendors can do anything? Have many of them gone to City Hall to argue? I think so, but we don't have union like the other like. Somebody have to do something. We didn't have until now this problem, so this is new. We have to think what we have to do now. Forced to close their stands as Howard Moscow's plan goes through. This means vendors will only be allowed to work with umbrellas even during the winter weather. Vendors have to pay a certain amount per month for rent, and if they're only allowed to work with umbrellas, this may force them to close their business. Sarah Roberts, CCTV, Toronto. The Ontario Court of Appeal has decided to release German-Canadian businessman Karl Heinz Schreiber today on $1.3 million bail. Schreiber was involved in controversial business dealings with former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. 
which led to Schreiber serving time for fraud and tax evasion. He is currently under questioning about his dealings with Mulroney and refusal to answer questions will, will find him in contempt. Canadians is from a foreign country. This news was released by Statistics Canada today. Immigrants make up almost half of Toronto's population coming in with 45.7% in the 2006 census. Most landed immigrants are from China with 14% of the population and India is with 12%. Experts say that by 2030, the population growth will be totally dependent on foreign newcomers. The recent shootings in Toronto's club district have raised some concerns not only among authorities but residents as well. Authorities believe that it could be caused by some of the visitors to the area, but Adam Vaughn says that people should, be, should still be considerate of the district's residents. Darlene Morales has the story. Just at the start of Crime Prevention Week here in Toronto, gunfire broke out in the entertainment district, leaving one man injured. Constable Mike Moffat believes that gang-related activity isn't necessarily linked to the district's residents. Many people from the 905 and the 416 area uh, do come down because it's a great place to uh, be entertained. The shooting took place near the corner of Peter and Adelaide. Although there are cameras in the area, as seen behind me, some residents are still concerned about the violence. It probably would impact where I go. Like, I'd probably avoid this area because I know there's not. According to Councillor Adam Vaughn, the aftermath of the violence will not only affect the clubbers, he worries that it will also hurt the clubs and businesses in the vicinity. The level of violence in the entertainment district is actually hurting the clubs now. I mean, people would stop going to the clubs because they're too crazy. Vaughn's main concern is the people living in the neighborhood. He suggests that club goers be respectful of the residents when they visit the district. Be respectful, not just to, you know, like the other people that are down for, for the night drinking with you and having fun. But you're walking through somebody's neighborhood, and just as you have a right to go out and have a good time, they have a right to have a good night's sleep. Four men have been arrested in connections with the shooting. Meanwhile, Councillor Vaughn is pushing for clubs to rent out sidewalk space in order to better regulate what goes on inside of the clubs as well as outside of the clubs. From the corner of Peter and Adelaide, Darlene Morales, CCTV News. The family of Christina Kalaika is still hopeful that she will be found. Kalaika's family is holding a fundraiser tonight at Markham Civic Center from 6.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. The goal is to raise enough money so that a search can resume in the spring. Kalaika was reportedly last seen on a camping trip this past summer. The OPP, family, friends and other volunteers searched the surrounding area turning up no hard evidence to the cause of her disappearance. The Bank of Canada lowered its interest rate today at to 4.5 percent. Low inflation rates are the main economic reason for the cut which is partly because of the strong Canadian dollar, which pushed down prices down domestically. Ontario science students score highest in Canada, according to an organization of economic cooperation and development today. The study was based on 15-year-old students around the world. Finland takes first place, Hong Kong takes second, and Canada came in third, with Toronto leading the race among the 10 participating provinces. The report tested 400,000 students in 57 countries. The questions were mostly science related, but math and reading comprehension were also covered. In math, Taiwan came in first place. In reading, Hong Kong came in first. This has been your news update. Let's go to Sulian White, who has the latest in entertainment. Well, the saying goes, no rest for the evil. Well, it seems evil can evil will not rest in peace. A man who won $13 million in court against the motorcycle daredevil says he intends to collect the money he was rewarded 30 years ago. That is now $100 million with interest if you check it. Shelley Saltman took Knievel to court after the motorcycle daredevil reportedly attacked him with a baseball bat. He was angry over a book Saltman wrote about him. It is not known if Knievel's estate even has that kind of money. Well, after breaking nearly 40 bones in your body, there must be something to show for it. Christian Bale wants to be the next Terminator. Bale, who is already filming another sequel to Batman Begins, is in talks to star in the hit that made Arnold Schwarzenegger a star. I think we all know what Christian's childhood dream was. Superhero, anyone? Well, T4's storyline will be the usual man against machines, man saves world. Can we try this in the real world, but instead against crime and poverty? 
And finally, shock job Don Imus is back on the airwaves. Imus had been in the media desert since April after he made controversial comments about members of a black female basketball team. His return also came with two black comedians, you know, for backup. I must claim the incident resulted in a life-changing experience for him. Well, let's all wait and see. And that's the latest in Hollywood. After the break, Ashley will tell you how Britney Spears flashed her privates again. Scandalous. I'm going to homeschool these children. Wow, this definitely looks like a teenager's room. And I have to say that um, they have to keep it a little bit neater than this. I'm really going to mess these children up. I'm a little worried. The wives have agreed to live by each other's rules for the first week. They've both written a household manual that explains when and how things should happen in their home. Our instrument of discipline is the whacker. The whacker? Which is used for spanking. Spanking? Our girls know I find it hard to stick to the grounding rule because I'm a softie at heart and I often give in. After they have been disciplined, they must ask for forgiveness and their siblings should follow through with forgiveness? Are they nuts? I am the queen. I like to be pampered. Steve rubs my feet, gives me massages, and tucks me in bed every night. Paul is the head of the household and what he says is final. Oh, that's really great. But he always considers my opinion before forming an answer? I wish I'll train my husband while she's while I'm gone. On Altima. With a new redesigned interior and a sleek new refined exterior. So go ahead, stay. Frankly, it'd be rude not to. Now get the Ultima 2.5S Extra loaded with $1,000 worth of no-charge options. Looking for affordable home ideas? Come to a Sears Home Store. It's the Buyer's Best Buy Sale. Get this Dream Fiber Sofa for just $899.99. Plus, get this Queen Size Sleigh Bed for just $899.97. And don't pay until January 2006. For great selection, great prices, and great service, there's only one place you need to go. Sears. Well, when you work in television, you want to make people happy. You should have a great smile. My teeth were just brutal. I had to do something about it, so I had to find somebody I could trust. I'm Dr. Mark Coachman, and I personally make sure everyone receives the most advanced care no matter how serious their condition. Together, we can achieve the smile makeover you deserve. The Coachman Center, 1 Triple New Mouth. So change your smile. And change your life. Thanks, buddy. Santa Margherita is the saint of impossible causes. Men pray to her when they need to be forgiven. Women pray to her when they are going to have children. From the depths of tradition Mama! comes an epic story of one family's quest for forgiveness. No! Sophia Loren in a CTV exclusive, Lives of the Saints. Coming in January, brought to you in part by Scotiabank. Life, money, balance both. Welcome back. Britney Spears feeds off the attention that pop icon celebrated her 26th birthday with fellow Harlot counterpart Paris Hilton. By the end of the night, Spears flashed the paparazzi with her second incident for photographers. The difference here is that her regions didn't make an appearance. In other news, Lindsay Lohan has reportedly broken up with her post-rehab boyfriend. Insiders say the star broke up with Riley Giles at the urging of her family and friends, who thought that Giles was, quote, unsophisticated. Lohan is now being linked to Heath Ledger. Word on the street is the relationship is purely physical. Forbes has come out with a, 20, a top 20 under 25 list of the year's highest young earners. LeBron James, the young basketball phenomenon has known as King James, was crowned number one with a basketball contract that pays him a total of $60 million. King James has an endorsement with Coca-Cola and Nike. Reggie Bush, the running back for the New Orleans Saints, took the second spot with $24 million. In the third spot was Maria Sharapova with $23 million. And that's entertainment. I'm Massey Albuquerque for CCTV News. Here's a look at sports with Matt Bailey. Thanks, Ashley, and hello, everyone. 
I'm Matthew Bailey here today with Adam Bema, and here's the latest in the world of sports. Adam? In the latest news from the gridiron, Toronto Argos head coach Pinball Clemens has been named the franchise's new chief executive officer. Clemens will now run the team from the front office instead of the front lines. This will make him the go-to guy for the organization's future plans. As head coach, Pinball Clemens led the Argos to a Grey Cup win in 2004, becoming the CFL's first black coach to do so. He will definitely be missed by his players because of his popularity as coach and long tenure with the Argos. The Toronto Maple Leafs haven't seen the Nashville Predators in over three years. To the Leafs, the Predators are a complete mystery. That will all change tonight as they will go head-to-head -head in the Air Canada Centre. Both the Predators and the Leafs have had a rocky season and they're trying to fight back their way to the playoff pitcher. Tonight is important is an important game for the Leafs as they look to win three games in a row for the first time this season. Now to the hardwood where the Toronto Raptors pulled off an impressive feat last night. The Raps beat the Bobcats at the ACC in a close match without three of their star players. Chris Bosch, Andrea Bargnani and TJ Ford all missed the game due to injuries. This put the Raps in an uncompromising situation against the Cats who came prepared with a healthy lineup. Raps backup players Chris Humphreys led the team with 17 points and Joey Graham chipped in with 13. The Ultimate Fighting Championships December 29th fight is experiencing a change in the roster for the pay-per-view event. Originally Matt Serra was supposed to fight but has withdrawn himself because of an injury. The fight will now be between Matt Hughes and former <laughs> welterweight champ George St. Pierre. Self-defense is high on a lot of minds in the GTA. This may include going to the gym and working out and joining a boxing club to vent their anger. But there's a different way that seems to be catching on due to the success of the UFC. Gordon Brunt has this report. First glance, mixed martial arts can seem intimidating. But in reality, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai appear to be the most applicable styles of fighting that can be used by anyone. Round 1 is a combat martial arts school that has recently opened in Bowmanville. The owner, Stephen Lee, is still a student himself, trains and uses these skills to help his students achieve their own personal goals. Lee emphasizes how the two forms of martial arts, Muay Thai being a stand-up art and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on the ground can be used by women for self-defense purposes. Somebody wants to take it to the ground, but it's just a head thing that employs amazing techniques to uh, help women that are 109 pounds to 200 pounds. The techniques that could hurt people that are 300 pounds, if you will, because it was invented to help the smaller person win a fight against the bigger person. He entered the sport after he arrived to Canada from Jamaica and was physically attacked at school. Lee's cousin and student Ingrid Hanf also has personal reasons that have motivated her to train in Muay Thai. Was I going too fast there? Actually, he put a lot of fear into me. And I found yeah. that with Muay Thai um, and Jiu Jitsu, even with Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, you can use it on the street. And half the time, anyway, fights end up on the ground. So, and I, like, I agree, and my, my cousin even put into me that jujitsu is something that would be good to learn okay. for a woman on the ground, because most of the time that's where a guy wants to get you. And Muay Thai, just because now I know if I see him down the street, I won't necessarily have fear in me. I don't want to scream the accepted news and I want to win the score, you know, looking for a new degree of cell phone. It's only going to go one run to see some TV. Over to the baseball diamond where the Blue Jays are new retro powder blue uniforms. The jerseys are a throwback to the old days when the Jays were a championship caliber team. Lloyd Mosby and John Mayberry were on hand to show off the new threads for a promotion called Flashback Fridays. This will start next season at the Rogers Center. Team officials are hoping the style will catch on with the fans and maybe give the Jays a needed boost to their game. The NHL has handed out Nashville forwards Scott Nickel a five-game suspension for cross-checking Montreal Canadiens defenseman Patrice Bourgeois in the face. <laughs> Dur during the game, Nickel was given a double minor penalty for whacking Bourgeois with his stick. This won't be Nickel's first time being suspended. The last time, he was kicked out of nine games for sucker punching a Buffalo Sabres defenseman. Nickel will be allowed to return to his Nashville teammates on December 15th. 
and he will have to forfeit over $45,000. More from the ice as the Ottawa Senators are trying to regain their composure after losing uh, last six games. The Sens began the season with a 16-3-0 record, but have lately fallen behind on an 0-4-2 skid. Now Ottawa must pull it together to win on the road as they head out for the next five games. Tonight they'll be in Tampa Bay to face off against the Lightning at St. Pete Times Forum. The puck drops at 7.30 p.m. Thanks, everybody. That's your sports for this evening. Now we're going to turn to Gordon Brunt for his thoughts on gifts for this holiday season. Thanks and hello everyone. Isn't Christmas about giving and about taking the time to find that perfect gift for each loved one? So is it just me or is giving a gift card as a Christmas present the most complete opposite of that? Most people say they give a gift card to someone because they don't know what to buy that person. I think that's just pure laziness. I'm not trying to sound selfish, but is it really too time consuming for you to try and find out what I like? Give me a gift card at Christmas is basically telling me you don't know what, what I like. You don't care to find out and you're too lazy to shop around for me. So you give me a gift, a plastic gift card and that I can swipe when I go out and do what you should have done and shop for myself. Thanks for listening. That's all for me. After the ba break, Paula will tell you about thoughts, her thoughts on Christmas carols. <laughs> Few relationships in life are more important than the one between you and your Michelin tires. Rugged, long-lasting Michelin light truck tires. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. I'm Paula Barreros, and today I will be talking about Christmas carols. With Christmas fast approaching, department stores and malls have already started to play the carols many of us have become so familiar with over the years. Now, for someone like myself who works in retail, listening to the same songs over and over for seven hours at a time becomes sort of annoying. I mean, you hear the same song about 15 times in one shift. How annoying is that? What about people who don't even celebrate Christmas? I've actually had quite a few customers complain about how annoying it is to listen to the same carol four times in a matter of an hour when they're shopping. Now, the question is, do these carols actually make people want to go out and shop? Or do they make people want to stay home and not get out to shop? And those are my thoughts for CCTV News. I'm Paula Barreros. Now back to the desk for the final word. Thank you, Paula, for the commentary. And those were the top stories for this evening. Take it away, Blaine. On behalf of all of us at CCTV News, stay warm. And for all of our Jewish viewers, happy Hanukkah. Good night, everybody. be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised.